Hello everyone, and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today, we'll be covering 2018 Amy 1, number 10. And this is the first problem in our um, dynamic programming and math series. And uh, many of you might be wondering why we're using dynamic programming in a math problem. And I'll explain why uh, that's very efficient for this problem later. Actually, uh, this technique could be used on three problems on the Amy 1, and I'll, we'll be releasing those videos soon. So the problem reads, the wheel shown below consists of two circles and five spokes. The label at each point where a spoke meets the circle. A bug walks along the wheel, starting at point A. At every step of the process, the bug walks from one labeled point to an adjacent label point. Along the inner circle, the bug only walks in a counterclockwise direction. And along the outer circle, the bug only walks in a clockwise direction. For example, the bug could travel along the path A, J, A, B, C, H, C, H, I, J, A, which has 10 steps. Let n be the number of paths with 15 steps that begin and end at point A. Find the remainder when n is divided by 1000. So at first, we see that we have 10 steps uh, that are in the diagram, and we have to go 15 steps from A. So trying to do casework on where A goes first and where that goes second will be very tedious. But we can use recursion because a key thing we see when we look at this problem is that the number of ways to get to A in 15 steps is just the number of ways to get to J in 14 steps plus the number of ways to get to E in 14 steps. Because from J, you could just move back to A and E, you can move back to A. Similarly, for, similarly, for a point like G, the way, number of ways to get to G in N steps would just be the number of ways to get to D in N minus 1 steps because you can just go from D to G plus the number of ways to get from F to G. So with that in mind, we can create the following systems of recursion. And so we have A of N is simply equal to J of N minus one plus E of N minus one. Then we have B of N is equal to A of N minus one plus I of N minus one. C of N is equal to B of N minus one plus h of n minus 1, and d of n is equal to c of n minus 1 plus g of n minus 1, and um, e is equal to d of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 1. And since we've done it for the inner, but these all relate to the outer, uh, we can also do these recursions on outer parts. So if we have j, we have j of n, is equal to a of n minus 1 plus i of n minus 1. And then um, f of n is equal to j of n minus 1 plus e of n minus 1. g of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus uh, d of n minus 1. And then h of n is equal to g of n minus 1 plus c of n minus 1. i of n is equal to h of n minus 1 plus b of n minus 1. So now that we have these recursions, we can easily compute the number of ways to get to a from 15 steps because we know that our initial condition would just be um, after one step, we get to b in one move and we can get to j in one move. So Basically, our values for b and j would be 1, while everything else would be 0. And so the idea of organizing into this table is nicknamed uh, dynamic programming tables, because dynamic programming is basically a way to make recursion a lot uh, kind of faster by using the values that you computed at the previous step to kind of influence the values that you're computing at the next step. So over here, we have all our recursions. And so we know that the values that at the that we compute at the previous step will directly affect the values that we get at the next step. So with that, we can just um, kind of use our uh, initial condition in order to find the number of ways to reach back to A in 15 steps. So over here, I've created a document and you have the recursions over here. And so we can label, we can basically create a, a 15 row by 10 column table. And each column would be A of N till j of n, while well, each row would be n equals 1 through 15, and so uh, so on. So after one step, there's zero ways to get to a, because you can't go back to a. There's one way to get to b, 
Um, there's going to be 0 to C, 0 to D, 0 to E, 0 to F, 0 to G, 0 to H, 0 to I, and 1 to J, because you can go from A to J. And so after one step, we can use A of N is equal to J of N minus 1 plus E of N minus 1. A of 2 is going to be equal to uh, B of, or it's going to be equal to J of 1 plus E of 1, which is going to be uh, 1 plus 0. So that, that's just 1. And then using the recursion we found here, we see that B of 2 would be equal to 0. C of 2 would be 1. D of 2 would be 0. E of 2 would be 0. F of 2 would be 1. G of 2 would be 0. H of 2 would be 0. I of 2 equals 1. And J of 2 is equal to 0. And um, for n equals 3, we'd have a of 3 is equal to 0, b of 3 is equal to 2, c of 3 is equal to 0, d of 3 is equal to 1, e of 3 is equal to 1, f of 3 is equal to 0, g of 3 is equal to 1, h of 3 is equal to 1, i of 3 is equal to 0, and j of 3 is equal to 2. And so along the way that we're making these, we notice that we have lots of patterns going on. So if you look at a specific column, um, Let's look at column three, for example. We see that A is equal to C is equal to F is equal to I. And it isn't too hard to see why this holds true if, uh, if you consider the diagram. And similarly, we can see that B of N is equal to J of N and uh, C of N is equal to F of N. And you can see like, uh, because we have these recursions here, you can see that if you put J of N as A of N minus one plus I of N minus one, that also corresponds with um, uh, b of n, which is equal to a of n minus 1 plus i of n minus 1. So then j of n should be equal to b of n for all values of n. And so kind of, if we look at that this way, then we can just exploit the symmetry. And we can kind of cut off the last five rows because we know that the values will always, always be the same. So what this means is that we can basically compute a of 4 as 3, b of 4 as 0, C of 4 is 3, D of 4 is 1, and E of 4 is 1. And we know that these values will be reflected somewhere in here, uh, but we don't really have to consider it anymore. And then, so if you do that, then you can replace A of n with B of n minus 1, since B of n is equal to J of n plus E of n minus 1. And you can similarly do this for the other value. So I'm going to fill out the rest of the table, and you guys can too. So over here, I finished my uh, table, and basically what I noticed, so as I explained earlier, what I noticed is that uh, these values are kind of reflected in if you flip both halves. So after 7, I was pretty confident that they were going to be the same. So then I just kind of chopped off the last half of the table, and I filled it in over here. And so as you can see, um, I did the values from 8 to 15, and I got 3,004. So that means the number 15 step ways um, to get to A of 15 is equal to 3004. And also another tip while you're making these tables is that, um, so whenever you move from a location to another location, you see that you can either move back or you can move um, forward or clockwise or counterclockwise, but you can only move to two other points from your own point. So the number of ways to get to um, after n steps, the number uh, the call the values in your row should add up to two to the n basically. Like over here, we see at um, a seven we have seven plus twenty plus seven plus fifteen plus fifteen times two, which is equal to twenty seven plus seven plus thirty, which is equal to sixty four times two, which is one twenty eight, which is obviously equal to two to the seven, and so on. So once you've completed your table, we can just go back to the problem. We see that um, a of fifteen is equal to 3004. We want to find the remainder when n is divided by 1000, and that's just equal to 004. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please um, send it to your friends or family. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.